Yo, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title, today we're going to talk about McQueen. But McQueen at G specifically. And once again, I apologize for that one period of time where I would like keep pumping out McQueen content as if I'm just talking about and reading about him, which is true. I've been reading this book and that's all I can talk about because that's, you know, all I've been absorbing. And I don't like that. I don't like to just give you McQueen content. I want to give you a lot of different other content. But once again, my time is limited and all the time I spend reading that book is on McQueen. But while reading about McQueen, that book and also articles and other books as well, this side of McQueen intrigues me the most. Sorry, not side of McQueen, but this period in McQueen's life intrigues me the most, which is when he was um, designing for Givenchy. And the reason why I say it's the most interesting is because once again, it's like, a, you know, LVMH appointed a young British designer at a French house, which is what uh, Bernard's been doing back then, John Galliano at Dior, and then what Stella McCartney, you know, this whole thing is just really interesting. And second of all, it's the story and experience McQueen had, McQueen experienced when he was working for Shimashi, which is chaotic and messy. Unlike the clothes, the clothes are beautiful. The clothes on the surface feels like McQueen's just doing everything right. But on the down low, does the company agree with him? Does everyone agree with him? Does everyone support him? We're about to find out. So in 1996, Alexander McQueen was rumored to be the first choice of Givenchy, among other people as well, among Marc Jacobs, Azadine Elia, Vivian Westwood, and I believe Jean-Paul Gaultier, was also in consideration. And everyone, because you know, McQueen has accumulated a reputation for himself for being the East End Yob, and also just, you know, a fashion renegade, the bad boy, the naughty boy. And that's why a lot of people think that this choice is for PR. Like Bernard just LVMH just wanted to pick Alexander McQueen because there's one press coverage shock value oh my god another british designer at a french house you know that type of deal so alexander mcqueen going before even going into Givenchy was already being doubted right key point one and key point number two is that before joining Givenchy, alexander mcqueen is already designing for his own label and to add on six extra collections each year for Givenchy. that's a lot for an artist that's really erratic and you know, couldn't sometimes control his anger and emotion. This is going to be bad for him. And this is what he said. I can't imagine anyone doing that. My first concern has to be McQueen. Givenchy would be a lot of money, but I'm not really into that. Plus, Paris does nothing for me. Basically, all these big companies don't, they don't care about you as a person. You're only a commodity and a product to them and only as good as your last collection. I agree. As good as your last collection is definitely, you know, a really toxic cycle, a toxic thing in the fashion industry. Uh, so much they brand the whole thing as art. It's still business, so that's why they really just pay attention to what you created and, and base your whole reputation and your, your skill on your last collection. And I also remember reading that McQueen took this job for two reasons. Even after knowing that it's going to be a lot of pressure, it's going to be toxic. He did it for two reasons. One of the reasons is because the money, it's I think it's one million pounds for two years. And the second reason is that he just want to spite all the other competitors. He hated, apparently, he hated Vivian Westwood. He despised Marc Jacobs and other people. He, uh, he's, he's okay with them, but he wanted to show the world that he is the one that won, came out on top after the whole consideration process. And that's why he took the job to prove a point, kind of. So he ultimately took the job and his friends around him were all supportive, but not supportive because they know how destructive McQueen can be. And John is basically going to be adding oil to the fire. According to one of his friends, Miguel Androver, said that Lee was much more powerful than Givenchy. Lee was representing the days he was living and Givenchy is dead. I would agree that Givenchy after Uber left is kind of approaching the dying era because it's not really fitting in the mind. It's not really transitioning into anything. So inst instilling young blood into the brand makes sense, right? But in Givenchy and in Givenchy and McQueen's case, uh, McQueen will eventually, because under pressure, exhibit w way more extreme and destructive and uncontrolled behavior because of the pressure. One tiny interesting detail about the deal is that LVMH tried to negotiate taking McQueen's own brand as well, but Alexander McQueen knew that that would be the end of his career if he actually do that because 
look at what John Galliano did, right? He sold his, I think he sold his uh, name brand to LVMH. And then after being sacked from Dior, his brand is gone now. No one knows what they're doing with it. So he knows that will be the end of his career. He didn't do it, obviously. Smart, kind of the only good thing about this deal. And it's the money and he didn't sell his own brand. And all, obviously also the clothes. The clothes are insane. They're so beautiful. On top of all these crazy demand from LVMH to McQueen, what to produce, what to, what's the expectation and everything, they basically restricted McQueen's private lives. No bars anymore, no clubs, no meeting shitty friends type deal. Julian McDonald McDon said that McQueen's life was based around the back streets, you know, normal people hang out places, not glamorous, anything. That basically means that LVMH took all the fun, all the joy, sucked it all out of McQueen's life. And he is now, because he's he's not able to run with the normal people like he used to, he's now, you know, hang out with Kate Moss, hang out with Naomi Campbell, and you know, that whole crowd. He seemed to have adapted to the high society fine. But is it though? McQueen, when he was working at she she basically had no expect when he first started, basically had no expect no instruction given. There was no help. Nothing was given to him. Nothing of a clear sign of help or guy was given. And Julian McDonald also said that um, LVMH basically never helped anyone. They never did anything nor gave any advice. And this pressure of having to navigate everything on its own worsened McQueen's drug abuse problem. And you know how the timeline is. You work Givenchy's collection, you work McQueen's collection back and forth, this and that. Everything has like a really tight time frame. So you may, you may have, you know, two months to work your own collection after working a Givenchy collection. So there's a lot of stress. And that was the time where, uh, you know, he's exhibiting like really extreme emotions and extreme behavior. And that's when his friends think that he is, he may be bipolar. To put this into perspective, how much work McQueen was doing, um, basically, by the time he put out his second collection, second collection for Givenchy, it will have been his fourth collection in three months. The fourth, his second collection for Givenchy is the fourth collection he's done in three months. That is crazy. And he, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't go light. He doesn't go light with his designs. You know, he go, he's all constantly inspired by history. He researched a lot. He knows what he wants. But it, it is, he doesn't take it lightly. He put a lot of effort into the fucking designs and everything. So that, that's a lot of work. Four collection in three months. That's crazy. And then Uber, you know, on the side, when people interviewed him, there's like, oh, when you can make a dress that's sellable or wearable, it's just, it's just insanity. It's just madness. It's just, you know, destruction of the brand or something like that. I kind of understand Givenchy's you know, perspective, because it's his brand, he, that's, it, you know, what McQueen was doing is the exact opposite of what she, you know, she was doing, and McQueen didn't seem like he's designing to cater towards the brand's growth, where she, she was, you know, a, really a businessman also. So yeah, I understand why he would rage and, you know, be angry that McQueen's doing that to his brand. But, you know, come on, like, give him a bit of faith in my boy McQueen, right? And at this point, it's pretty sure, it's pretty prominent, it's a prominent fact to a lot of people that McQueen hated friends and friends hated McQueen. I think like even two, three collections in Givenchy, or maybe the whole time Givenchy was not earning money at all. They're not earning money at all, but because of McQueen's creation and shock values and being a provocateur, they were earning a lot of press coverage. People want to talk about McQueen, people want to talk to McQueen, they want to understand the collection, but they were not earning money at all. And LVMH wanted to sack McQueen, but McQueen didn't care. And the reason is because McQueen actually learned quite a bit when he was at Givenchy. First of all, he earned that big fucking paycheck. And second of all, he once said that a sense of softness and lightness was learned during the time at Givenchy. Uh, when he was working as a tailor or even working his own brand, he never grasped the idea of softness and lightness. So working at Givenchy, yes, it kind of broke him, literally, uh, mentally broke him, but he learned a lot that would later on be reflected back to his brand. So essentially, on the surface level, it's a win for him. He got the money, he got the knowledge, he got the press coverage, he, everyone knows him. He's like, you know, you hate him or you love him, everyone knows his name. On the down low, he's totally fucked, or you can say it's the beginning 
of his downfall because of the stress from the Givenchy brand and also the people he started hanging around with and how he turned into this monster where no one can tell the truth. He would just fire people left and right because they would tell him no or whatever, you know, being unreasonable. That's what he turned into. Is that the recipe for greatness? Who knows? But you know how it is at the end of the Givenchy reign, um, Izzy Blow, Isabella Blow, McQueen's close friend, or so they brand themselves as, they more so are like a codependent, really toxic friendship slash family member. But yeah, she put McQueen in contact with Tom Ford and then because he really won out of LVMH. So after I think the two year contract, he, is it two year or four year? I forgot, but somewhere around that time, he wanted out and he, you know, contacted Tom Ford. They came together, signed a deal, and that's how he, that's how he sold his brand to the Gucci group and essentially leaving LVMH. And there's a whole story like between, you know, from Isabella, Isabella Blow saying that, oh, why the fuck am I not on the contract? Like, I put you guys in, you know, in contact together. You sold me out. You betrayed me and everything. The whole Isabella Blow herself, it's, an, it's a really, really interesting character in the fashion industry. I can make a video on that soon. Um, but yeah, that's how it went. That's how, that's how everything happened. He basically got burned out. He felt mistreated and he's going insane, high key. And he left, he went to Gucci, which he, he didn't like, he didn't like like it, but he, it definitely wasn't as bad as LVMH. So yeah, that's how it kind of went. But let me know what you think about McQueen as Givenchy. Also make sure to go follow my Instagram, subscribe, follow on TikTok and everything. My name is Ryan, I do fashion history, fashion anthropology content. I talk about stories like that and uh, not all the time about clothes, but, but more so giving you the whole picture to help you appreciate your favorite designer more. And that goes on behind the scene, everything, interesting stories. That's what I do. Go subscribe, go follow. I love you guys, have a good one.